Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there. Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, I've been tracking the outcry, and it has been an outcry, and it has been surprising over Manny Pacquiao's decision to fight Chris Algieri in his next fight. I think many hardcore fans realize now that the Golden Boy top-ranked truce was really a lot of talk. At the end of the day, these promoters want to protect their prized assets. The biggest draw for top rank is Manny Pacquiao. Right? They don't want to throw Manny Pacquiao to the wolves. They want to give Manny Pacquiao fights that look good on paper, where Pacquiao is going to have certain advantages. So, Chris Algieri, depending on where you sit, may or may not have beaten Rushlin Provotnikov. Right? Manny certainly was not going to hop in the ring with Rushlin Provotnikov, right? You saw the shape Timothy Bradley was in after his fight against Provotnikov. You saw the shape Mike Alvarado was in after his fight against Rushlin Provotnikov. Right, so now we have a situation where Pavodnikov loses his title to Chris Algieri. The boxing hardcore knows that that title was at 140, not 147. Right, many of you believe what the score on HBO believed. What the lead announcer, Jim Lampley, a different person on HBO believed, which is that Pavodnikov won his title. Right? Defended his title. I believe that. Right? So, when it was announced that Manny Pacquiao was fighting Chris Algieri and not 147 interim champion Keith Thurman, right? And not, let's say, 140 pound champion Danny Garcia. Right? Fans thought, you got to be kidding me. Right? Manny's not fighting Devin Alexander. In sum, you're still not getting the big fights. You're going to get a fight between a 147-pounder and a 140-pounder. Right? Now, let me say this. I appreciate the outcry. I think fans should demand the best fights. I also, though, do believe that fighters fight so long and hard to get to the top, or in Manny Pacquiao's case, to get back on top, that even champions deserve breather fights. Right? But let me say this. To the boxing public, if you're that outraged over Manny Pacquiao against Chris Algieri, who is an unbeaten fighter who does have a belt, then where is the outrage over Floyd Mayweather deciding to fight a guy he's already beaten again? Right? A guy who, can we all agree, had his best moments early in his first fight against Mayweather and who was getting hit with flush shots in the middle of a fight that ended with Mayweather building steam, gaining strength, looking better and better the longer that fight went on. Now I respect, I have a deep respect, I have an admiration for Showtime's Al Bernstein. Al Bernstein applauds the fighters for agreeing to the rematch. He had Floyd Mayweather barely winning the first fight. But understand, we all have biases in life, right? Showtime, the network, 
wants to make their events look as exciting as possible. Showtime, just like Top Rank, right? I would argue Top Rank has protected Manny Pacquiao somewhat, right? Didn't Pacquiao recently fight Brandon Rios? Was Rios a welterweight? Just like Top Rank has protected Manny Pacquiao, isn't Showtime here, and let's just call it as it is, protecting Floyd Mayweather? Right? Maybe Al Bernstein has a bona fide, deep seated feeling that the first fight was close. But the people around him, of course, have a vested interest in convincing you that the first fight was close. Right? The people on Showtime really do have an interest in selling you on the closeness of fights so you tune in to the next Mayweather fight. Right? And of course, who's the biggest draw? And I mean it. Who's the biggest draw on Showtime in the sport of boxing? It's Floyd Mayweather. Showtime knows you're more likely to tune in to a Mayweather fight than you are, let's say, a Keith Thurman or Demetrius Andre fight. Right? So. We have a rematch that, quite frankly, is even more outrageous than the Manny Pacquiao-Chris Algieri fight. At least Manny and Chris haven't met yet. Right? Floyd established over the last two-thirds of the first fight against Maidana that he was the dominant fighter in the ring. Look at the judges' scorecards. Understand Al Bernstein's scorecard is closer than two of the three judges' scorecards for that Maidana fight. Also, as you look at that first Maidana Floyd fight, on the side of the ring, when Maidana's throwing countless low blows and elbows, right? Maybe it looked like Maidana was being competitive with Floyd. But did you get that feeling when they were in the middle of the ring? I didn't. I thought it was an obvious mismatch in the middle of the ring. Understand too, Manny Pacquiao and Floyd Mayweather were two different types of fighters. I believe Manny Pacquiao is most difficult in the early rounds the first time you see him. Right? Because with Pacquiao, what you see is what you get. He's not showing you different looks as the fight progresses. He's always trying to jump around and then land a straight left hand. That's his game. And of course, it throws off opponents because his speed is that blinding. You see it in the first round you can't figure out the angles the punching power is more than you think right look at Pacquiao's legs I'm telling you a lot of punching power comes from a guy's legs right the punching power surprises people Pacquiao's a shorter fighter right and so as an opponent is trying to figure out the angles, he's looking down, he doesn't quite know what to make of it. He's getting battered with dazzling hand speed. Freddie Roach fighters in general don't sit in the pocket. They're outside of the pocket, so there's a movement dynamic that throws off an opponent. Right? So we get. Juan Manuel Marquez getting decked three times in the first round of their first fight. We get Marquez getting decked in the third round of their second fight. Understand Mayweather is completely different. He's the opposite of Manny Pacquiao. Mayweather has hand speed, but you only see him flash it when he needs to. Right? Mayweather is a slow starter, not a fast starter like Manny Pacquiao. 
Mayweather is different depending on who he's fighting. In fact, in the same fight, Mayweather will figure things out and he's a different fighter in the second half of the fight than he is the first fight. Understand, if you're going to try to beat Floyd Mayweather, you have to do it early the first time you face him. Take the Shane Mosley fight. Mosley had some success early. He buzzes Mayweather multiple times. There are at least two very hard, straight right hands that land. Mayweather's holding on to Shane Mosley early. You remember the last eight rounds of that fight. It's a victory lap for Floyd Mayweather. Weren't you looking at your watch by the start of the ninth round of the Mayweather-Mosley fight? Didn't you figure out that somewhere along the line, Floyd Mayweather figured out exactly what he had to do to beat Shane Mosley? Shane had no chance after that. None. Right? Mayweather is adaptive, reactive. He learns you and then he dominates the second half of the fight. Right? A rematch with Mayweather to me is a foregone conclusion. Why am I, the boxing fan, supposed to believe that Marcus Maidana, who had no answers after the fourth round of the first fight, is going to have any answers at any time in the second fight. Well, now we're getting indications, right, that Mayweather might be closer to leaving the sport than we want. Now, keep in mind, there was a lot of talk about Mayweather facing Amir Khan. But yet in a recent interview, Mayweather said that Khan had a Danny Garcia problem and a Lamont Peterson problem. Doesn't that sound to you like reasons a fighter gives to avoid an opponent? Well, Mayweather went further. Right? Mayweather was uh, talking about other fighters and Mayweather basically was talking about the problems other fighters had as well. He said Manny Pacquiao had a Juan Manuel Marquez problem. Right? Well, my question to Mayweather is simply this. What's Keith Thurman's problem? He's unbeaten. He's an interim champ at 147 pounds. Let me just point out, I'm going to continue to mention Keith Thurman's name because really the boxing public needs to be demanding that Keith Thurman get a shot at the title. Right? We need to demand that. Also, Mayweather needs to figure out, is he fighting at 154 or is he fighting at 147? Because if he's fighting at 154, then what's Demetrius Andrade's problem? He's an unbeaten champion at 154 pounds. Now, if a fighter, any fighter, wants to go around town calling themselves the best ever, TBE, then these are the fights they need to give us. I applaud Mayweather on fighting many tough fights right under the Showtime deal. Right, I applaud him for fighting Marcus Maidana the first fight. I applaud him for fighting Canelo when Canelo was unbeaten. Mayweather's star gets brighter and brighter the more Canelo wins in the ring. Not that I thought Canelo beat Erislandy Lara. Right, I applaud Mayweather for fighting Robert the Ghost Guerrero. I thought that was an intriguing matchup, understand? The ghost is a southpaw. There's a certain dynamic there you don't get in every fight. 
Buck. Boxing is a what have you done for me lately sport. It'd be one thing if Mayweather's going around just saying, hey, I'm glad to be among the elites. But he's not. He's going around calling, calling himself the best ever. You can imagine, given the deal that he has with Showtime, right? Nobody involved in that deal wants Mayweather to lose anytime soon because Showtime's getting numbers. The boxing public is tuning in. But the one thing I know is that the torch is always being passed to a new generation, right? If you're an older fighter and you have a belt, then you need to decide if you're going to be a real champion and actually defend that belt against worthy opponents or whether you're going to retire and then cherry pick. You know how they do it in boxing. Ray Leonard was a master at it. He retires, he's on the sidelines, he waits to see a champion he thinks he can beat and then he'd come back and fight that person. Mayweather right now needs to figure things out because the winner of Kell Brook, Sean Porter, by the way, either guy gives Mayweather all he can handle. Right? What I'd like to know is, what's that guy's problem going to be? What's going to be the reason for Mayweather picking rematches against fighters he's already beaten over fighting the winner of Kell Brook, Sean Porter? Understand, too, that these guys are not going away anytime soon. Keith Thurman's a young guy. Demetrius Andrade's a young guy. The winner of Kell Brook, Sean Porter, is a young guy. These guys are in their prime. Some of these guys, Andrade in particular, looks like he's getting better in every fight. Right? So, let me say this. Boxing right now has us paying big money. What I want you to do is to... Just look at the pay-per-view ads when they come out for these fights, right? They want you to pay top pay-per-view money to see Pacquiao Algeri, to see Mayweather against some guy he's already beaten, right? Instead of having you see, right, Pacquiao against some of these golden boy Al Heyman fighters, Right or Mayweather again, some of these unbeaten fighters where Mayweather, if asked about them, can't say. This fighter has a Lamont Peterson problem. Right? Also, look, fans, you know where I stand on this whole love fest, supposedly, between Top Rank and Golden Boy. You know, I think it's a bunch of BS. You know, I'm a guy who believes in purse bits. Right now, we've seen a lot of pictures of, you know, Oscar De La Hoya smiling when he talks about top rank and Bob Arum saying, finally, I get to work with Golden Boy and stuff like that. Don't give any of these promoters a free pass until they give you quality fights. Right? Until you're hearing that elite top rank guys or actually fighting elite golden boy guys because of the promoter and not because of the fact that one's the mandatory challenger and the sanctioning bodies forcing the fight then you shouldn't believe any of these promoters boxing's a tough business at the end of the day everyone is trying to protect their cash cow Right? Let's just say in a world of very tough fighters, right? Thurman, Kell Brook, Sean Porter, Demetrius Andre. Think about it. If you're going to cherry pick at 140, how about longtime reigning unbeaten champion Danny Garcia? Why wouldn't you fight him before you fight Chris Algieri? Right? Just understand the promoters are giving you less than the best fights. I frankly don't want to see any guy who's cherry picking like this walking around with TBE hats on. 
right? Let's let's be real. Only wear the TBE hat if you're fighting the best of your era. Don't try to pretend that some rematch involving a guy who you dominated over the last eight rounds. I mean, seriously, I thought Mayweather beat Maidana by a few rounds. I thought the only thing that made the fight interesting was Maidana's ability to take a punch. Right? I know there's some people here who thought that, oh, this was a close fight. You know, all I could say is, look at Mayweather's accuracy on the CompuBox numbers. Right? I mean, understand, it's not like Mayweather's squeezing punches in a tight holes. You don't see, let's say, Maidana with a hand up and a shoulder here and Mayweather somehow getting the punch here. No, Maidana's hands are like this and he's getting hit flush. This is the fight they're selling you instead of Mayweather, Keith Thurman, you know, Mayweather, Manny Pacquiao. Right? We're not, we're not getting those fights. We're getting these fights. And we're getting a lot of promoters posing as if they're giving us better fights than this. Somebody needs to throw a red flag on the sport right now. Consider this to be just that. As Mayweather wears a TBE hat after he beats Marcus Maidana in the rematch, I hope some members of the crowd boo him. Sometimes even great fighters, and let me just say, I personally consider Mayweather to be one of the very best ever. Right? But let me say this. Sometimes even elite fighters need to be need to be reminded that we expect them to challenge themselves. This is not the way to do it. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. You know, if Mayweather really wants to make history, I think a great fight would be a mayweather Cotto rematch. If Mayweather wants to prove to us he's the best, how many unbeaten fighters do you need before you <laughs> accept the challenge of one of them? Right? Keith Thurman's in your division, Floyd. Demetrius Andre is in a division where you won a title. These guys are unbeaten. What's their problem? What's your problem? Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here. Thanks for stopping by.